we were friends. <laughs> I've been offended. I'm going to need a second opinion on the bell ringer. <laughs> I'm not sure it's always at the right time, but anyway, just a quick update. We're following the Lord's leading the best we can. Our house is under contract to be sold. We'll be Who's moving room for brother. Speak to, to my speak to my mediator back oh, there. Oh, brother. If you have any questions, <laughs> just go to him. <laughs> we're gonna be uh, we'll have a home base in Sweetwater, but we'll be traveling more. So we got back from Amarillo recently. The pastor's son down there was stirred up, learned how to witness. Uh, since we've left, he sent me pictures nearly every day of people he's won to the Lord. Amen. So it was like taking a torch and just passing it on and then they're going to run with it. That's right, brother. So that's what the Lord will be having us do. We'll be traveling a lot doing that. So my question for you all, my, my home church, my, my church family. Amen. Who in here can I give the torch to? Or rather, will respond to the Lord's call to pick up the torch? There you go. There's going to be a need. The Lord tapped me on the shoulder the other night and gave me this message. As the pastor says, if this shoe doesn't fit you, don't try to put it on. But I'm going to, I'm going to give you something. And out of Ezekiel chapter 12 is where we'll put in at. That's an odd place to start, isn't that? In Ezekiel, talking about soul winning and passing the torch. Ezekiel chapter 12, verse 1 through 3, we'll look at. Did you know it's possible to stand under good preaching for years and years and hear how to present the gospel, and that we should present the gospel. And you can hear it, and you can be up to the ears with the gospel, but never actually hear what's being said. Come on, brother. Amen. The word of the Lord also came unto me, saying, Son of man, thou dwellest in the midst of a rebellious house, which have eyes to see, and see not. They have ears to hear, and hear not, for they are a rebellious house. Pause there. I'm not causing any, calling anybody rebellious in this house. That's not what I'm saying. But I want you to look at it. It's, it's possible to hear what the preacher is saying, but not really hear. Yeah. So I ask you during this short message tonight, ask the Lord in your heart, reveal something to me, if there's something in the way, something blocking my ability to hear or see what I need to be doing. Because it takes Him to open your understanding. Just like at salvation, you could be preached at and preached at, but till the Lord opens your eyes, it doesn't quite make sense to you. That's the same way with anything else. So ask the Lord. Let's read verse 3. Therefore, thou son of man, prepare thee stuff for removing, and remove by day in their sight, and thou shalt remove from thy place to another place in their sight. Now pay attention right here. It may be that they will consider, though they be a rebellious house. Well, right off the bat, we know right here the Lord is not a Calvinist, because he says, no, it might be that they will consider what you say. Amen. And that's what I want you to, to, to focus on. On these next couple of points is will you consider these points between you and the Lord in your heart and the question that needs to be answered is are you willing not do you know how to witness or what's the best way to break the ice or what's the best fishing hole the question is, and it's, it may not even be about witnessing it may be the Lord may be wanting you to do something else as pastor or preach or yeah, man, teach down, or maybe get sin out of your life it could be just personal things the question always has to be answered is, but are you willing? Right. That's the question. That, that question left unanswered is why we don't have eyes to see and ears to hear sometimes because we're not even willing to hear it. So the Lord pulls the shades down, and that's where you'll sit. That's why there's 50, 60, 70-year-old Christians out there still in diapers, but they're smoking cigars. They never spiritually grow because they're not willing to advance Amen. with their walk with Amen. the Lord. Here's why it's important, and this kind of goes along with the pastor's message. Are you, are you ready to meet the Lord? Well, let's take a look at 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 16. With the question in mind, are you willing? And this is the Apostle Paul speaking. He says, for though I preach the gospel, I have nothing to glory of. For necessity is laid upon me. Yeah. Yea, woe is unto me if I preach not the gospel. And I've heard that word woe several times, but today I went to the dictionary and looked it up because I wanted to make sure I had it right. And it's simple. A woe is a great sorrow or a grief. And Paul says, woe is me if I don't preach the gospel. What's going to happen when we do meet the Lord and he judges his church? Are you going to have a woe against you? You're in heaven, congratulations. You made it. 
But the judgment seat of Christ is not whether you get in or out. It's what have you done since. And there's going to be people there. It's a, it's a woe. You had the ability to respond and preach and teach or do whatever it is that the Lord would have you do. But you never answer the question, but are you even willing? See? So I, I give you that because I don't want you to be up there and our eyes meet on that day. And you say, man, I didn't know. I, I got saved. I was in, but I didn't know there was more. Well, there's plenty more. Are you willing to go to the Lord and say, I want to know what's next? Another point for you. Let's look at Matthew chapter 9. That question, are you willing, has come up so much in our household as my wife and I have been going through this submission process. I've had to submit my home, my job. She's had to submit her job. The Lord don't always take something just because you submit it. But when you submit it, it's his to do with it what he will. And he'll give you a piece about it if it's submitted. If you don't submit it, it's his to do with it what he will, and he'll, he's liable to yank it out of your hand. So if you submit these things and answer the question, are you willing, he'll then tell you which way to go. Regarding soul winning, look right here in Matthew chapter 9 and verse uh, 37, 38. The Lord speaking. Then saith he unto his disciples, The harvest truly is plenteous, but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest, that he will send forth the laborers into his harvest. Now that's my prayer for Lee's Chapel, and then the rest of the body of Christ, is that more soul winners and more laborers will be raised up to take the message in your community. Don't look at me and say, well, I don't want to do what that guy's done. He's done went crazy and has left his house and is traveling. He may not have you do that. He right. may have you talk to the guy at the grocery store. Right. Amen. One soul is important. Yes, sir. If that's all you ever get done, that means everything to that one soul. But when you get when you catch one fish, usually you want to go catch another. Is that your prayer that laborers will be lifted up? Right here. When I was up in Elkhart, Indiana, making my rounds down the sidewalk, I ran into a lady that uh, Seemed like she may have had something wrong with her, some kind of learning disability or whatever. But I, I gave her a gospel track. I had a picture of Jesus embracing somebody on it. It was a warm picture. And she stood there and she looked at that picture the whole time I went through the gospel with her. And she never really said a lot. And I said, well, okay, well, give that a read later, why don't you? And she said, I can't read. She never learned how to read. By the end of the conversation, I didn't even lead her in a prayer. She was saying, thank you, Jesus, thank you, Jesus. Because she'd been looking. But if the Lord, by his providence, didn't send somebody to that lady who couldn't read and tell her, who would tell her? Right. Do you see there's a need? So the Lord is not a Calvinist. He says that they may consider. See, there are some people, he tells you, there are some people that, are, that will strive to enter in and won't be able to. Right. See? Got one more point for, point for you if I have time. James chapter 2, verse uh, 14. And these are just kind of random points, but they, the Lord put on my heart, so maybe they're not that random. Maybe, maybe he put them on my heart for somebody specifically or, or whatever. But um, this is one of the most controversial verses that people amongst Christians can't get figured out what it really means. But I don't want to go into that. What does it profit, my brethren, though a man say he hath faith and have not works? Can faith save him? Drop down to verse 17. Even so faith, if it have not works, is dead, being alive. Now understand, this is not a salvation verse. Salvation is not, don't have anything to do with works. It's a free gift. But I'll ask you, if I was to look at your life from a distance, can I tell by your works you believe what you say you believe? So I see your, I see your works. That man probably believes believe something. But the works are usually specific. Not every preacher is saved, but they have a work. Not every church door is saved. So you can't judge by those things. Not every good guy that mentions the good Lord is saved. Right. But you find a man that's out there telling somebody about the blood of Christ and the grace of God and how to be born again, and you hear those buzzwords, and that man has that message and he's taking that one, then by his works you could probably infer he's got it. Yep. So my question to you is, is then, can I look at your life and say, he's telling people about the blood and the grace of God and Paul's gospel and the King James Bible, or not? Because then I would call into question, are you willing? 
See? Lastly, for my conscience sake, and you don't have to go there, but 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4 is what the gospel is. Because Christians can't seem to get that right either. And that's how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. And he was buried and he rose again. And that if a person would just believe that with a childlike faith, and that it's already paid, that all who call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. That's the message that we have to take. Amen. And it's not really any more complicated than that. The worst thing about it is taking one of these and approaching somebody. Once you get past that, it kind of goes downhill from there. Once you get over that initial fear, you'll find that it's not as scary as you think it is. That makes sense? Go tell you. I hope this has been a help to somebody. I don't guess I need the whole time.